all right so welcome back so in the last video we have learned about uh super resolution can so in this video we are going to look at uh extension so after i think after one year uh that you know after one year uh when these people you know release this super resolution can paper after one year they have released enhanced super resolution can generated adversarial network in which they have made some changes right uh, they have essentially made the model more uh number one more powerful like more uh with, with many parameters and number two they have made some minor changes that i'll also be discussing right so uh in this video we're going to look at enhanced super resolution generative adversarial networks so let's get started so to remind you to um, just get you uh, back on board back on track so we have this image right and then what we'll do is we'll just create patches and you know create many like uh, many patches and we'll just train a cnn model that can take this uh, input of like an image or and the low resolution image or uh, you could just train a generator model that takes in a noise and generates an image and then we could have a loss function that uh, or a discriminator we could have a discriminator that determines number one how uh, realistic that image is and number two how uh, how accurate that image is or how close that image is to uh or or in other words we are going to use discriminator to predict how good that image is and then we are going to use another loss function for the generator to actually predict how how many features or how many features can it be track right how many fee how, how many high level features can it track on the image so that is why we have used the vgg architecture to actually find the features of this both of this uh, realistic or predicted and the actual image so that is the idea of sr gan in this video we are going to look at uh, enhance we are enhance our super resolution network with this uh, you know like not i don't think it has many changes i think uh, the main diagram that we have to visit is this diagram so this is the architecture so they have changed the architecture by a lot you know and this is like much complicated much complicated architecture like not for understanding right it is uh, we don't have much more many more stacks of cnn layers so the idea is so we don't have these type of architectures so what we're going to have is we are going to have these blocks rrdb blocks residual in residual dense block so in res in each residual in residual dense block like we're going to have bunch of residual in residual dense blocks rrdb blocks and then each in each rrdb block we are going to have three dense blocks so dense is not a very correct word because now that you know you are like deep learning student i don't i don't think dense block might confuse confuse you this is not like the feed for our neural network so we are going to have dense blocks right we are going to, we are just going to have like three dense blocks in each rrdb block and in each dense block we are going to have like uh, these many convolutional layers along with leak relu and many more skip connections as you can see we have many more arrows connecting each other like uh, which makes sure that there are many more skip connections and each dense block contains of this um, uh, further many uh, cnn layers or a residual network and then each dense and then each block contains three dense blocks and we're going to have a bunch of these rrdb blocks so therefore yes we do have a lot of complexity we are going to add a lot of complexity in terms of uh, the size of the model we're going to have many parameters and because we uh, uh, of course this is a, this is model is an improvement right so therefore we don't have many many more layers or many more rrdb blocks residual in residual dense block right so that is the idea right and and we are all, we are not also going to use the uh, batch normalization right we are not going to use the batch normalization so yeah right so we are going to have uh, again i'm going to repeat we are going to have rrdb blocks many rrdb blocks in each rrdb block block is going to have uh further three sections dense block three dense blocks in which each dense block consists of many cnn layers and along with leaky relu layers so that is idea that is the network art architecture idea and then the next big change next big change that we actually care about is we are going to uh like while training a discriminator rather than making the uh like rather, rather than just taking the generated image Right, or rather than taking the generator and the real image and predicting predicting it whether it was real or not, right? For example, taking the real image and predicting whether it was real, or taking the fake image and predicting whether it was fake, 
right so this uh insists a lot of like if you think about it right so there can be some features that may be highlighted by the gan and maybe there will not be that much diversity if you can think about it right so that is uh, like a problem faced faced by these researchers while they were doing this so the output of sr gan right so it it only used to track like some set of features for example there is some blurred image and it could only see only one type of features and there is no diversity of uh, generation so therefore what we have done is rather than just shake rather than just taking this uh, real image rather than just taking this real image what we'll be doing is we are going to take the both the real image and the fake image so we're going to we're going to have pairs of real, real real and fake images and we are going to predict if this uh, if each image or if second image is more realistic than fake data so what we're going to do is so we are going to predict if uh, like we're going to take the actual image and the like we're going to take the original image and the predicted image or the generated image uh, actual image being the image from the data set so we're going to have create pairs so we are going to take in the input and the output like uh, the gan in this case is going to have input and output right x y pairs we are not dealing with unsupervised learning problem we are going to have the lower high resolution image and uh, right we are going to have high resolution image and the uh, like predicted image so we are going to take in y and y hat y, y and y hat not the x x is x defines uh, the like input so we are going to take in the y and y hat the original and the predicted and then we are going to pass that both of these values to the uh, discriminator and then based on that we'll actually predict predict relative realist realness so how Im re real one image is relative to the other so therefore through this we could train the model we could the gan could actually have a diversity right so we could train for each uh, distribution for each image and then right so that is uh, one thing and this also increases stability Right. So, if you can study, uh, if you can read this, besides the improved structure of the generator, we also enhance the discriminator based on relativistic GAN, right? Different from the standard discriminator, which estimates the probability that one input image X is real and natural. A relativistic discriminator tries to predict the probability that a real image X R is relatively more realistic than a fake one X F. So that is the idea, right? And then specifically, we replace the standard discriminator with the realistic. Uh, relativity relativistic average discriminator rad denoted by dra the standard discriminator in nsr can be expressed as d of x is equal to sigmoid of c of x where sigmoid is the activation function and c of x is the non-transform discriminator output then the rad is for mutilated dra of x real and x fake is equal to so this is going to be like new formula we don't have like cx so we're going to first pass in the uh, real image and fake image and we're going to subtract this values and uh, pass that through a sigma function right so that is this is the idea so by using by making these changes to this um, like generator model so discriminator model it is going to affect the model by a lot so we we, can, we could have like a better uh, model so that is the idea and then um, i think that's it like that those are the main changes and if you want to go go maybe further just read every line if you can so you know just go through every section maybe so this is the code. I'll just open that. <coughs> so this this is the implementation. You could go through the implementation also. I think I'll just go through the model architecture, RRDB network architecture, just to show you what that is. So yeah, we have imported func tools. They they have imported func tools, not me. So I have not built this. So they they have implemented this in like Torch, PyTorch. So yeah. So there, they have Im, Im, uh, like imported many different libraries, and they have created this function, right? Right, make layer, which takes in block and number of layers. So we just uh, loop through like number of layers and add blocks. So we're gonna have add. We're going to be adding n number of layers blocks. We're gonna adding n blocks, and then uh, this is the residual block for five C. So it, I think yeah. So we're gonna have bunch of CNNs, right? And then one leaky ELU. And then in the forward layer, we're going to apply the leaky value on this output of this CNN. So we're going to create, so we have, we have here, we have created a bunch of uh, objects of CNN. And then we're going to perform leaky value on that and we'll finally get the output. And listen here that we are going to also performing ResNet. We'll, we will have a ResNet here. Like this is ResNet, if you think about it. So ResNet is nothing but taking the uh, values of the previous layers so of previous 
layers yes and then adding them uh, and then performing and then just adding them right then performing uh, the values on them or performing the operation on them so that is the idea so therefore we have like many inputs x and x1 so in the x2 layer we'll take both x and x1 in the x3 layer we'll take x x1 and x2 so we would have a bunch of uh, residual connections so like this is like this could be a new uh, implementation implementation for you because you might have uh, only come across through uh, like variable setting variables and all that this is all this also does exist so this is the rrdb so in which uh, like we have like three blocks right so i'm going to go through i'll show you the image so uh, like we have developed this now so now let's develop this right so i'm going to call this uh, so i'm going to create a object object of this previous class that we have built so previous class we are going to create some objects and then uh, we could have three blocks we are going to have three dense blocks just like we have here right and then uh, right and then now i'm going to have the i'm going to build the final resnet sorry rrdb resnet rrdb net residual in residual uh, net network so in which i'm going to first create a object of this class yeah and of the uh, like rrdb class and then now i'm what i'm going to do is right i'm going to first uh, add like uh, like in the first convolution layer and then i'm going to call this function make layer and then call that on this rrdb block so i'm going to have like many rrdb blocks and then i'm going to i'm going to essentially have an nb number of rrdb blocks residual and residual dense blocks and then uh, i'm going to have another call cnn 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 and then uh, finally dqlu and then in the forward layer so essentially uh, we have just uh, we have initialized the object here we have just call this uh, classes and now here we can actually implement them so we'll have the first uh, rrdb block right so we're going to have uh, rrdb trunk so it is rrdb trunk so we are going to add it rrdb trunk and then uh, we're going to add like we're going to add the just like residual net we're going to have, add uh, f this this way this this output and this output and then we're going to perform a bunch of ldu and upcon up, up convolution and all that so like this is the implementation details of the architecture and uh, the theoretical architecture and if you want to use uh, like pre-trained models right if you want to use like if you want to use it for your own problem rather than training the model like if you are solving uh, like a general problem rather than training it rather than training a separate uh, enhanced super res resolution model of course you could use uh, the tensorflow hub tensorflow hub is a as i've told you it's a very good place for uh, deep learning or machine learning engineers to actually use pre-trained models rather than training them uh, like from scratch for themselves. So will we, uh, I'm going to go through this notebook, this code, this notebook, you could, uh, I'll put it in the, I'll put it in the description. So make sure to check that out. So I'm going to have, uh, so I'll just go through this. Of course, we'll import, uh, the necessary library, necessary libraries, OS time, uh, image, NumPy, TensorFlow, TensorFlow, and map.lib so we're essentially going to get the model from tensorflow hub so we'll download an image from uh, this url so and then uh we, actually, we could actually save this uh, uh url and then we'll uh, create the model path saved model path right and then uh, we'll we could pre-process -pre this image using some uh things so we have decode image so I think convert converted into like numbers, numpy array, and we could just um, you know add another layer, convert to tensor, like crop like crop bounding boxes and cast them into floats, and then we can also expand the dimension, and then we'll save this image, and then we can just plot this image. I, I think I'll I'll keep running. I'll I'll run them as we go. Right. So I'll I'll run them. And as we are not training the model, we could run it. Uh, we, we will not be needing any GPU because we are not training them, right? We're just using this pre-trained pre model. So, yeah.
So this is the image. I don't, I'm, the, the image is going to come. So this is the image, and this is the this is the exact image that is used in the paper also. So, yeah, so this is the image. All right. So uh, now let's uh, load our model. Now let's load our model from this link that we have already stored above. Let us create the, that. And we could actually see how much time it took for the model to actually predict on that image. I'll run this. So we'll wait for that to be loaded. And then after that, we'll run this. So yeah. Yeah, so we're going to call that image. We're going to get this fake image. And then let's see. Let's cal We'll also calculate the time taken. So it, yeah. 10 seconds, 10 seconds. And now let's uh, plot our image. Like this is the slope, so this is the output. So this is the input, which is pretty blurry. And this is output, which is very surprisingly very good, right? Many features are actually carried out because they because of the loss function that we have used. And you know, you could download multiple uh, images like that. I'll, I have now downloaded a new image here. Right? And then uh, we could just pre process the image, downscale the image. And then uh, this is the low resolution version. This is the low resolution version. And we could just uh, see, like get the model and then plot it on that, that again. So we could just get this pre-trained model from this code, hub.load uh, and just pass the link. Like you could just go to TensorFlow Hub and select a model and you know, you'll get a link. Just copy the link and paste it here. And after performing super resolution, you have got this amazing picture, which is yeah, good, right? And then uh, right, so PSNR score of uh, two twenty eight, you got so, so yeah, yeah. So this is the original image, the the original image, uh, the original high resolution image, and this is the low resolution image, and this is the super resolution image that we got by uh, doing performing this model. And to be honest, this I think yeah, like both of these are pretty similar. Right, but you know this is of course uh, like this part is like has has like higher quality and this doesn't this doesn't like there is a little bit bl blurring I mean we can't do anything this is just machine learning right and we are like I think we should all be impressed by this uh, amazing performance and and uh, yeah so this is the paper enhanced super resolution generative adversarial network so thank you for watching and uh, hopefully in the next video I think I'll cover I think we'll we'll uh, finish up generative, like we'll, we'll cover up generative adversarial networks for now. I think we'll probably go through something like variational autoencoders or stable diffusion. You might have heard about them. So yeah, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. So.